Make him live. Make him live till tomorrow. It is almost night, as you can see, Nicomedes. It is no problem for your science to keep a man alive for less than one day. Make him live. Madam, I do what I can. But when the wick ends, nothing can keep the flame alive, replies the doctor. And he goes away. The two sisters embrace each other, weeping disconsolately. And Mary is the one who is weeping more. Her sister had a hopeful heart. They hear Lazarus's voice coming from his room. A loud authoritative voice that startles them because it is unexpected from such a weak person. He calls them. Martha, Mary, where are you? I want to get up. I want to get dressed. I want to tell the master that I'm cured. I must go to the master. A wagon. At once. And a fast horse. It was certainly he who cured me. He speaks fast. Syllabalising the words. Sitting on his bed. Flushed with a high temperature. Trying to get out of the bed. Prevented from doing so by Maximinus, who says to the women rushing into the room, he's raving. No, let him go. The miracle, the miracle. Oh, I'm so happy that I provoked it. As soon as Jesus was told, God of our fathers, may you be blessed and praised for your power and because of your Messiah, Martha who has dropped on her knees, is beside herself with joy. In the meantime, Lazarus continues to speak, excited more and more by his temperature, which Martha does not understand is the cause of everything. And he says, He came so often to see me when I was ill. It is fair that I should go to him and say, I am cured. I am cured. I feel no more pains. I'm strong. I want to get up. I want to go. God wanted to test my resignation. I shall be called the new Job. He assumes a hieratic attitude and making wide gestures, he says, the Lord was moved by Job's penance and gave him double what he had before. And the Lord blessed the last years of Job more than the first ones. And he lived until... No, I'm not Job. I was among the flames and he pulled me out. I was in the belly of the monster and I have come back to light. So I am Jonah and I'm the three children of Daniel. The doctor, called by someone, comes in. He looks at him. It's delirium. I was expecting it. The corruption of the blood affects the brains. He strives to lay him down and exhorts the others to hold him carefully. And he goes out again to attend to his decoctions. Lazarus at times becomes rather impatient of being held. At times he weeps like a child. He is really delirious, moans Mary. No, none of you understand anything. You cannot believe. Of course, you do not know. By now, the master is aware that Lazarus is dying. Yes, I informed him, Mary. I did it without saying anything to you. Ah, wretch, you've destroyed the miracle, shouts Mary. No. As you can see, he began to feel better when Jonah reached the master. He is raving, certainly. He is weak, and his brain is still dulled with death that had already grasped at him. 
but he is not raving as the doctor thinks. Listen to him. Are those the words of a delirious person? Lazarus, in fact, is saying, I bent my head to the decree of death and I tasted how bitter it is to die. And God has now said that he is satisfied with my resignation and he is restoring me to life and giving me back to my sisters. I shall still be able to serve the Lord and sanctify myself with Martha and Mary. With Mary. What is Mary? Mary is Jesus' gift to poor Lazarus. He had told me. What a long time since then. Your forgiveness will do more than anything else. It will help me, Jesus said.